Where do you stand on Kate's spiracy? There's no doubting its impact on the reputation of the British royal family. The Mother's Day portrait, apparently taken by Prince William last week and later badly edited by Princess Catherine, has taken lurid gossip about the monarchy into the mainstream. This was The Late Show with Stephen Colbert last night. Here's something for those of you who are royal watchers, and I know you are, Lewis. I am. I'm afraid I've got some troubling news about England's royal family. Um, I know this is your life's passion, Lewis, and I'm sorry. <laughs> As we were talking about on this show yesterday, the kingdom has been all flutter by the seeming disappearance of Kate Middleton. Well, he went on to make uh, an extraordinary allegation about the state of uh, Prince William and Catherine's marriage, which we're not going to repeat now. And this was John Oliver, who is British. This was him talking about it. There is a non-zero chance he died 18 months ago. <laughs> <laughs> they might be weekend at Bernie's in this situation. <laughs> Right. Non-zero. I'm not saying it happened. Right, right. right. but non-zero. I'm non saying it's non-zero. Non <laughs> until proved otherwise, until you see her with a copy of the day's newspaper. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> I mean, she's been pretty ill. Is that funny? The controversy has even made it to the floor of the White House press room. Does the White House ever digitally alter photos of the president, <laughs> vice president, <laughs> first lady, <laughs> before they release? Digitally altered? Not that I know of. I would say no. Why would we digitally alter photos? Are you I mean, talking about... Are you, are you comparing us to uh, the uh, what's going on in the UK? I'm... Well, to be clear, there's no factual basis that we know of for the rumours about the state of the marriage of the Prince and Princess of Wales, nor indeed about all the speculation about Kate's health and what's happened to her. But the US tabloid press is packed full of it anyway, as are the mainstream TV shows now. It's easy to understand why, isn't it? Because Kensington Palace chose to release a photograph with editing errors so obvious that major news agencies had to delete it from their systems entirely. And in doing so, they chose to mislead the press and the public at precisely the moment in which they were trying to establish clarity. And that was dishonest. The result is more questions than answers. Why don't they share the original photograph and just let us see what it was? Was it actually taken last week? They say so, but can we believe that? What could have been so badly wrong with just a straightforward picture of the family, perhaps from the archives? And if it was so awful, why not simply publish one of the many other photographs that they've ever released? Why is Princess Catherine, recovering from abdominal surgery, spending her time anyway, hunched over Photoshop, making amateur edits to official portraits? She's got literally servants to do that. And most bafflingly of all, why not edit in the missing wedding ring? It's quite likely that she's taken it off perhaps because her hands are swollen from medication. Who knows? But that would be normal, not a big deal. But just about everything else in the photographs being edited to improve it, why would you not include, through editing, the one thing that is likely to dampen the flames of conspiracy rather than fuel them? The royal family is going through a hell of a lot at the moment. I have enormous personal sympathy with both Princess Catherine and her family, especially, of course, the king who's battling cancer. Attacks on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have been personal and bitter. That won't have helped. And they're still reeling as an institution and a family from the deaths of Prince Philip and the, and the Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, Kate needs a break. On that, I agree. But it was their decision to release his photograph to quell the rumours. And it's left instead a massive self-inflicted bruise and even more conspiracy theories. Well, joining me now to debate this and much more, tonight's packed podcaster and alleged comedian, James Barr, lawyer and commentator Paul Arone Adrian, and from New York, the host of Maintaining with Tyrus on Outkick, the great Tyrus. Well, Tyrus, given you're my resident uh, royal expert across the pond on this one, what do you make of Kate Spiracy? Why do you do this to me? <laughs> oh. I thought we were going to talk about the fight, man. Okay, cool. Listen, <laughs> we can come to that. Yeah, I'm huge on the royal family. I got Queen Elizabeth tattooed on my chest. <laughs> Listen, uh, just show the photo, okay? Like, mm. parents, we all make mistakes. I just feel like whenever some, whenever they augment anything, I'll just take it over from the States. Whenever you change anything, I don't even like people. If you send me a picture with a filter on it, I'll send it back to you. Like, this ain't you. This is a mm. lie. Mm. So uh, that annoys me. So I just feel like when it comes to children and stuff like that, for some reason, high... What they feel high aesthetic or elites or royalty, they never can be like normal. Like yeah, something happened and we dealt with it. You know, it's always, it's always they're always it's always a cover up when it shouldn't be. Yeah, it's also I think that if it, I was trying to think of the equivalent in America, it would be like the president's if the president's wife was sick and did a similar thing of releasing yeah. a family picture to dispel rumors that she was seriously ill and made herself look really healthy. If it turned out that she had made. 16, 17 different edits to that picture and deceived the White House press team 
and said it was genuine, and they'd put it out to the media, and then it came back rejected by everyone as fake. I mean, that would be a big story in America, wouldn't it? But, but hold on. It's, but that is literally in every household. That is being a normal... Yep, I'm a sexist, I know. A normal woman with <laughs> pictures. Like, when I take a picture and you take a picture, it's like, there, there you go. Mm. I don't even look at it, okay? But my wife would literally look at that picture, edit it, filter it, screen it, flip it, change the color. That's what... That's just how behavior is sometimes with photos. It's not a conspiracy. It's just somebody... We worry about how we look too much. And for yeah, some the, reason, the okay, opposite here's where I think you're worry slightly, about that a lot more than we do. Yeah, but here's where I would put a slight spanner in that argument, which is that the whole purpose of them releasing that picture was after the TMZ shot a few days earlier of the princess looking pretty unwell, actually, in a car. It wasn't published here in the UK because we have an arrangement with the royal family not to do pictures like that. Uh, but it was published everywhere else, including America. So they then put out this picture to dispel the conspiracy theories raging about what may be wrong with her. And, of course, if you then manipulate the picture, in that circumstance, it ceases to be harmless... I, I get ..and it. becomes a massive but barrel of gasoline on the conspiracies. OK, let me throw a conspiracy back at you, though. OK. Isn't every picture they take augmented and changed and fluffed? Maybe. Every picture? You, Maybe. Like, in King fact, Charles fact, looks that skin looked that good all the time. Like, well, yeah, I'm just saying it, it may be. I mean, I think look, I did be come to you guys here. I mean, James, on a serious point, when I saw it, I thought, great, she looks really well, healthy, right? Everything's okay. Crisis over. The moment you hear that it's been manipulated to the extent that agencies in the most extraordinary thing yeah. I've ever seen it mm. return it, reject it, kill it, it just it sends a conspiracy theorist off the dial. I mean, because then, I mean, I'm asking myself, as a former newspaper editor, I'm being a bit cynical about it, was that picture of her from last week? Or... Because it bore little relation to the picture of her in the car. Well, you mentioned the wedding ring and talking about swelling. Why yeah. is she wearing skinny jeans? There's lots of questions here. I don't think that she was in that photo. That's my opinion. If, if she was, then she'd plastered an old photo on top. Mm. But did she do it? Clearly not. This is the palace. We know how this works. Do you really think Kate has an Adobe subscription? Maybe. Does she have because, Photoshop? Is well, she maybe, doing that? Clearly she not. I, what I do know is that she has, she has, for the last few years, since the kids actually were born, she has taken it upon herself not to let the media take pictures of the kids yeah. in the formal setting, but to do it herself. Yes, so true. she clearly is an amateur photographer. And I applaud so that. It's, so it is probably quite... But why have the kids got their fingers crossed? Because if we've seen the Truman Show theory, the suggestion would be that they're, they're not really with their mum. Oh, James, <laughs> And they're trying to James, say... No. They're trying to tell us something. Like, no, I know I'm in the, no. I'm in the rabbit Come hole. Come on, here we are. You are in the rabbit hole, but so are millions of people around the world, Paula. And yes. uh, although on one level it could be trivial, Right, it might be just be literally, she's OK, she's recovering well, she's trying to do something to correct the conspiracies and just got it wrong by editing and not realising. Or it could be that they're hiding something. I mean, I've been told some stuff which is, if even half of it is true about what's happening here, yeah. it's pretty alarming. So I don't know what to believe, yes. nor do any of us. We're yes. not there, we don't know. And this but... is the problem, isn't it? This is the problem. As you rightly pointed out, the picture on Mother's Day, Mother and Sunday, was supposed to be about quelling any normal concerns that, you know, those out there who love the royals have. But what that picture actually did, and here is where I add to the conspiracy theory, what that picture actually did was compound the conspiracy theories. Yeah. It allowed people yes. to question what it is we are being told from the royal family in a way that we would never it's have also, done before. It's also, and I think this might be more damaging going forward, is turn them into a laughing stock in yes. America, which is, of yes. course, a very important country yes. for the royal family because that's where millions of royal fans live. Yeah. This is a clip from The Daily Show. You know how I know that's fake? There's three kids smiling at the same time. <laughs> As a parent, I know that's impossible. Also, it should be noted, I didn't even know or care about Kate Middleton's leave of absence, but then you release a photo so edited they have to issue a kill order? Well, now I'm all in, all right? And that's the problem. And Time magazine, you know, one of the most respected magazines out there, has published an article called The Royal Family Has a Trust Problem. And it includes this statement. It, it, this controversy, it says, stands to undermine the press and the wider public's trust in the royal family, an institution that, as the late Queen Elizabeth said, must be seen to be believed. This crisis now prompts many to question whether they can still believe what they're seeing. I mean, Tyrus, you're a very amusing uh, comedic force in America. When you become a butt of all the jokes on late night 
And when Stephen Colbert also starts doing jokes about the state of your marriage in the way that he did last night, um, you know, for us over here, this is our next king that is being mocked and ridiculed. Yeah, OK, because I'm just going to keep it real. We got far more embarrassing things that makes you feel better, Pierce, over here in America, <laughs> to where what's going on with the royal family is like DEFCON 4. Mm. OK, we got a president, can't remember what time of the day it is. We got every day someone's yelling at us if we don't use their pronoun that we're supposed to know. Like, we've got all kinds. Of, we got crime, inflation, uh, eggs over here cost like 300 bucks. Uh, which is like seven seven pound over there. So I mean, it's is we got no one's talking about y'all over here. Like uh, the word on the street is, you're good. King Charles is good. That's all we know. So you're fine. No one's and no one's watching the other guys. Do you ever no one's the watching? Us. Look at his rating. A serious question. Do you ever? He you gets ever, a, he got a participation award a few years back when he got the Emmy. Do you get the ever, lowest do you, ratings because that's where America's at right now. We're a participating country right now. Despite, you guys are good. Despite what you've just said, Cyrus, do you ever does a little tiny part of you ever wish that you had actually preserved the monarchy in your country? Do you think it would have spared you a lot of pain? I have spent many beautiful weeks and months in Europe. I wrestled in Wembley Stadium. So uh yeah, you know what? To to be a part of it, to catch with the the extravaganza that is the royal thing that you guys do over there. Uh, I would like to have a little better grammar when I speak a little bit. I'd take, I'd take some of the king's language uh, if I could, but uh, I didn't. But you know what? I, I love you so much that I'm willing to come on here and talk about a subject that I have no business talking about. <laughs> but I would do it Because that was all nonsense. <laughs> I mean, there's no way your eggs yes. would be cheaper if you I, had I just, the only right thing now. in my head was find a way out, and I found a way out. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be pleased to know, Charles, we are moving on to other topics, more in your wheelhouse in a moment. Um, but, James, there's yeah. a, the other serious point God about this... God save the Queen. There is a suggestion that this See, is all being done... She's dead. We should just let you know passed. she did pass away, yeah. sadly, Tyrus. Yeah, I mean, it's, we've established Tyrus doesn't neither that's knows it. much or cares much about the royal family. <laughs> and, and that's fine. Uh, you don't have to. That's the beauty of a democracy. Um, but, James, there's a, there's a theory that this is all being done to protect William. Right. You, you've and endorsed I'm, this. I'm fuming about it because everyone is, is suddenly saying, leave Kate alone, you're bullying Kate. None of these comments on these late night shows are aimed at Kate. It's mm. all about William. And this picture, I really don't believe that it was posted by William, uh, by Kate. I genuinely believe that this is William trying to cover something up. And, yeah. and the whole, it's Game of Thrones, isn't it? And but, let's be honest, it's not the first time that we've right. seen a female mm. in the royal family being asked to Thank take you. responsibility for the yeah. mistake of the house. And I did see a source close to the Sussexes saying... Hey, if you want to talk about Game of Thrones, I'm down with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this Game of Thrones, the dragons are coming for Khaleesi. Trust me, you couldn't dramatise this stuff, Taurus. No one would believe you. Uh, but I, I did see the Sussexes... Oh, you know what? Well, you saw how the dragons ended up. He, <laughs> yeah. he had a peaceful protest when his mom got killed and flew away. So, <laughs> that's how uh, that ended. I was going to make the point of the Sussexes of let it be known through sources that if this had been Meghan Markle mm. who had done this to picture, all hell would have broken loose. Mm. To which I would say, yes, actually. I think that's they a perfectly, denied that. I think they've a, made no comment on... Right, but if they had so, said that, it's a perfectly valid that, no, point. No, that's not true. They haven't said that. They haven't said anything about it. They haven't? They've remained silent about Kate's okay. photo, as they should, because it's nothing to do with them. So I let, I, what I would say then, even if they had, it would be a valid point, but I don't think that Kate is getting an easier time mm. than Meghan would have got. Yeah. I think she's getting actually just as hard, if and not that, And that's why I'm saying, uh, and calling this one out, because it isn't the first time that we've seen the, the woman having to take the fall for mm. what is this cataclysmic error that's been uh, undertaken here. Uh, and well, I so, want to know where the palace press office is, right? Where well, is they're the... hiding behind But this is, no, what, no, this is what people where is, are saying. Jeans, How can you they? employ people whose only job it is is to deal with the media who allow a photograph to be released from their office? Because they're desperate. Because something that we don't know Fine. is going on. Yeah, they're, they're, and they're doing what they, they can need to try better and advisors up. around them. They need to stop who lying. Can, who can look at that picture and say, oh, this has been edited, we can't put it out. Mm. They have clearly got incompetent advisors. So we right? go, we go back need, to the beginning. Right Isn't now, it? they need really good ones because the, the, the royal family is in, in tricky thing. This is a meme doing the rounds uh, about all this at the moment. And that is the problem, is that there's a lot of memes, a lot of laughter, a lot of mockery, a lot of... Uh, and now increasingly in America on the late night shows, a lot of uh, wild allegations being made by their top and can, hosts. Can I just make this point? There are children in that photo. Sure. And these children are now in the realm of being mocked mm. on social media, sure. which, mm. which which no one has spoken about. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we're talking about Kate and we're talking about William. 
their children yeah, yeah. are now a part of this. Well, I, and, and I hate that. And have allowed that. that to happen. Look, and what we... worries me more like alongside mm. that is that these late shows are saying all these things that we've been mm. seeing on Twitter for two years. Like this stuff has been going around Twitter. Mm. We've all seen it, yet we're all being silenced. We're not allowed to talk about it. We're too scared because we'll be sued, etc. But like Because it's gossip. What James. is going on? It, it, it's gossip. Let's I think, know. unfortunately, they used to always operate on a mantra of never complain, never explain. It doesn't work now. Now, I think they move they move to a new era I think so. where social media doesn't allow you to do that. You the have AI, to be, you have to be, I'm afraid you just have to share more. And the they have AI to. royal family, they will speak and they will complain. Okay, and we're going we're to put Tyrus out of his misery and move on from the royals <laughs> now. Um, I've got a fascinating story. This involves a former Harvard professor of medicine, Martin Kuldorf. Uh, he's an epidemiologist. He's been a professor at the ha University of Harvard since 2003. And he announced on social media on Monday that he's been fired by the university. I'm no longer a professor of medicine at Harvard, he said in a lengthy essay in the City Journal, uh, also posted in the news on his ex account. The Harvard motto is Veritas, Latin for truth. But as I discovered, truth can get you fired. Well, he joins me now. Uh, professor Kuldorf, thank you very much indeed for joining Uncensored. Um, for Hello. those who've not Thank been following me. this or haven't read your piece, just briefly summarise what has gone down here with you. Well, uh, uh, my superiors at Harvard were not very pleased when I objected to lockdowns and instead advocated for focused protection with uh, Dr. Jay Bhattacharya from Stanford and Dr. Sunita Gupta from Oxford. But then uh, later on, I think they are ignoring basic scientific truths. For example, we have known since 430 BC during the Athenian plague that if you have recovered from an infection, you have immunity. The infection acquired immunity. And despite that, they are man they mandated uh, uh, vaccinations. It was only last week that they, they ended the vaccine mandate for the students. And that's of course uh, very unscientific and unethical. It's unscientific because we know that people who have had COVID have superior immunity to those vaccinated. And it's unethical because let's say that this is the best possible vaccine ever. Um, there are certainly issues with it, but let's just for the sake of argument assume that it's the perfect vaccine, then uh, uh, we shouldn't give it to people who don't need it when there's a shortage of vaccines, which it was in 2021. And uh, there were people, older people uh, who hadn't gotten it yet, who were at high risk. And there were people in Brazil, Nigeria, India, and other countries who hadn't gotten it yet. So it's unethical then to force it on people who don't need it when there are people who do who, who has high risk from COVID to actually uh, uh, who haven't gotten it yet. I mean, my, my point would be, and I, I've got to be honest here and say that there were various stages during the pandemic when I got too emotionally overwrought by what was going on and very censorious of people who weren't having the vaccine. I believed the science at the time uh, and thought that if you had the vaccine, then you couldn't transmit the virus. That turned out not to be true and so on. And of course, the reality... And I've talked, you know, I, I wish I hadn't done that. Uh, the reality of it is that in a fast-moving health crisis like a pandemic with a novel virus, the science is inevitably going to evolve and change. And I don't understand why an epidemiologist expert like you, a professor at one of the supposedly great universities of the world, should not be allowed to at least offer your expert opinion and challenge the science, given that it changed so many times anyway. Um, but the idea also that Harvard should be somewhere that would then find you challenging science and offering your opinion, which might well be correct in many of these areas. I don't know. I'm not as expert as you. But certainly your job suggests you know more than I do. Um, that they would then fire you for expressing honestly held opinions. What does that say about Harvard? Well, I think there's a problem in science and academia because there has been a lot of censoring. Uh, I think we should neither censor true opinions, true things or false things, because if I have somebody who thinks something different, I want them to speak out so that we can have an argument, we should have debates. But uh, there was no debates about this, and instead there was censoring and there was slander. And in this case, I, I was fired together with uh, some other staff members. So uh, I think that's a huge problem for uh, academia. And if you look at the taxpayers, it's the taxpayers who are paying for our scientists to do research. Uh, the NIH is paying over a billion dollars a year to uh, Mass uh, General Brigham Hospital, uh, which is the Harvard Hospital where I, where I work. Uh, and I think the taxpayers deserve to be able to have to know that 
whatever the scientists do, that there can be debate between them and that there's no silencing or censoring or firing because of use. The academic freedom is very important and freedom of speech is very important. Otherwise, science will die. And the support of science will die and it should die if there's no this academic freedom. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me completely inconsistent with the ethos of any top university that they would employ incredibly bright, eminent people like you, incredibly experienced in your field, and then suppress your right to express honestly held opinions. But we've seen with Harvard, they recently came bottom on a list of universities on the free speech uh, analysis that has been done by a, an independent organisation. Then we had the furore over the uh, nonsense of the president of Harvard, you know, suppressing uh, views on campus during the Israel-Hamas conflict and so on. Um, time and again, we're seeing what seems on the face of it to be Harvard leading suppression of free speech, uh, when in fact they should be the absolute epicentre of encouraging free speech, shouldn't they? I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, what, so is this conspiracy? Is it cock-up? Is it, as Elon Musk would call it, the woke mind virus? What is going on here? I think the climate has changed and uh, we really need to go back to academic freedom, to freedom of speech. And I think that requires two things. It requires that people uh, can talk and that there can be discussion and there can be very passionate uh, discussion. That's good. As long as they are polite, we also have to make sure that there is no bullying or slander because then people will self-censor. So it's very, very important uh, to maintain an open uh, uh, climate of debate. And during this whole pandemic, uh, uh, there was uh, there was clearly disagreements about these things at Harvard. But uh, there were two of my colleagues who tried to arrange the debate between me and those who were favoring lockdowns. But uh, the other side did not want to participate. And I think that uh, if there's a scientist who is not willing to debate the abuse with other scientists, it doesn't matter if they are at, uh, uh, Harvard or Stanford or Cambridge or Oxford, but you shouldn't believe scientists who are not willing to debate their views with other scientists yeah. who have a, a opposing views. Yeah, I, I just think it's ridiculous what's happened to you. Uh, Professor Kuldorf, I'm sorry that this has come to end your career at Harvard, but I'm sure somebody else will snap you up pretty quickly. And I think it's an outrage, actually, and another outrage at Harvard, uh, following a series of other outrages. So I don't know what's happening there, but he's a complete top-to-bottom change of attitude so that students there are encouraged to express opinions and debate and challenge conventional thought. Otherwise, what's the point of Harvard? Um, but I appreciate you joining Uncensored. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right, let's go to the panel. Uh, Taras, this is definitely more in your wheelhouse. What do you... I mean, you and I have talked about Harvard before um, uh, on Gutfeld in, in the States. But time and again, Harvard seems to be, like I said leading the charge against free speech. Why? Well, because it's part of the, it's the feelings over facts revolution that we're having here by the, the woke. But you see, you did something in the beginning of your interview that had you been on any kind of board would have helped everyone out during the pandemic. Mm. You corrected yourself. Yeah. You looked back at the science, you said, you know what? We got it wrong here. And mm -hmm. now we're gonna get it right there. That's what I think the world, uh, American people, we could take bad news. Mm -hmm. You know, what we couldn't take was the average people who just study biology would be like, this doesn't make sense and why, how we're taking care of ourselves with this virus or, and with, with this thing. So we, as we continue to go, anybody, any doctor, uh, friends of ours, Dr. Drew, Dr. Nicole Sapphire, careers were wasted, pulled from TV, quacks their, their entire life. Like anyone who opposed them because, it, in another word you use, it wasn't conspiracy, it was corruption. Because look at all the people that have benefited. And I have a saying where a lot of times it feels like the American people with, during the pandemic, well, if we break a few eggs, no big deal. Mm. Uh, because they were continuing to do things that they didn't know. They didn't know long-term effects from the vaccines. They didn't, and we're still seeing that. And we're still learning. And even now when we're learning the truth, where's Fauci with the, whoops, we got it wrong. Because mm. see, there's this thing. Science can be, it's changing. So what started here with the information, as we discovered, things change over time. And when something changes, then you tell what happened. 
It's not that this wasn't difficult. It's just that they were fine with what was happening in the beginning because it was a control thing and a profit thing. So, and then we became more expendable, like we always are. Mm. We always have to do with medicines in, in our country. It's ridiculous expensive. Insulin is ridiculous. Uh, it's just nonstop. And they're always giving us stories about how they're going to do this and that. But they can cut a check to Ukraine in six seconds. But it just goes back to the thing. It was all about corruption, unfortunately, right. this pandemic. And uh, we're seeing the results of that. OK, so, James, I mean, look, I, you know, I admitted to that professor that I myself was too censorious. But the idea that academic institutions like Harvard would fire somebody like him for expressing opinions, many of which, by the way, I checked him out, many of which are now accepted to be correct. Mm. You know, lockdowns were pretty ruinous, particularly after vaccines came in. Um, you know, Sweden did turn out to do rather better by being a bit more open than we were here. You know, we should have treated younger people different to older people because younger people clearly weren't suffering from the virus in the way older people, and so on. I definitely agree with that last point. Right, so, but what do you think about what's happened to this guy? I think it's awful. Obviously, I think he should be allowed to say what he wants. I do believe that saying free speech is, you know, uh, is important in society is, is slightly concerning to me. Because Why? Think, well, because free speech doesn't necessarily exclude things that are wrong, but in this case... Well, actually, it does. That's the whole point of free speech. I'm not sure, if, wrong. not if you're inside. No, I can say something about anything, and I can be wrong, but I'm allowed to be in a democracy. But you have a responsibility, you have a platform. No, no, but I can be wrong. It's Let me ask you a question. Held opinion. Let me ask you a question, because I was listening to that. Um, if, if there was a vaccine tomorrow for the woke mind virus, would you make sure everyone had it? Would if you, what, sorry? If the woke mind virus, if there was a vaccine for this so-called yeah. woke mind virus, would you make sure everyone Oh, I'd had mandate it? that in exactly. a heartbeat. Right, there we go. So yeah. there is some hypocrisy. Because I do actually think Elon Musk is right. I do think it's a virus. I think it, it, it becomes contagious. Absolutely. It, it is not a virus. Pitt. Well, it, it, it's not a real virus, but it's a mentality virus. I mean, it is, Paula, because no. Harvard... No. is now the worst performing university in America for free speech. And, Harvard! And this is where I have a, a problem with this discussion, um, because we have taken a very small, small issue, which is man gets sacked from job. Happens every Sorry, day. Sorry, no. Professor... Happens, happens no, 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 no. It's not a small every, issue. Happens every Professor day. Professor at Harvard gets happens fired for expressing honestly day, held opinions about a pandemic. Happens every day. And then what happens is we hear why he thinks mm -hmm. he's been sacked, but we don't hear why Harvard thinks he's been sacked. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is actually because of something that the professor said that I agree with him on. Mm. He referenced truth. And I think that's a really dangerous word when we talk about science and why I think we've had this problem with COVID. Because when you start talking about truth, you, you introduce a level of subjectivity. Well... I think it was about this, and I think it was about that, and I've read on Facebook this, and I've read on X that. Well, no. Th and that's facts, what happened. That facts is what... are facts. Well, are they? The truth is truth. Are they? Yeah. The it's real what... problem is that a lot of your mates in the woke world <laughs> like to talk about the my... where the like... where world the woke, the woke world, world I... like to talk about my truth. Is this somehow am I, am I they can have the their... woke world Hang on, now? Let me finish. They talk about my truth, like there's some kind of weird version of the truth that you can manipulate that isn't actually you'll true. Find, if you listen back to the professor, he spoke about his truth. Mm. Mm. And that is why I reference the fact that we need to be careful in this discussion, because what we Should want... he have been fired for expressing honestly held views? And this is where I actually agree to a certain extent with the professor. What we want is scientific rigour. Of course mm. we do. What we want is um, the debates. That's what we want. But what I don't want is my professor telling me about his or her truth. You don't want a professor of epidemiology... Telling me about you, his or her truth. ...telling you what he believes are facts. No, that's, that's not quite what, a staggering that's not thing what to say. he said. Well, no, it's actually that's sort of agreement with said. you, really, isn't it? Because he didn't say that. And you just said that my truth isn't acceptable. So why is it when the professor's using I his truth... I think every scientist okay. in the world should be encouraged to look at a set of, of data mm. and, and give an honest opinion about what they think it represents. No, but science as a whole should make an opinion, not just one scientist. Science will never agree in totality. Exactly. They will always right. argue. But you take the... Yeah, but why is he being fired for having honestly held opinions about it? He's an epidemiologist at Harvard for 20 years. And we don't, we don't know the answer to that we question. And, and that's why right. I'm saying yeah. to you... We, when do, we, reference... we do know the answer. Yep. It's, unfortunately, it's corruption. Uh. We do know what the answer is. Well, I, I think it's... They correct. had a programme. Yeah. They Sounding weren't gonna, conspiratorial they weren't now. Exactly. I think I trust Harvard now. more than you guys, to be it's honest. Just, it, yeah. well, anybody who has gone through this and asked questions and challenges mm -hmm. is shot down. We are so far past that you would think, at this point, we could have a little, as we would say in America, come-to-Jesus moment, 
where we would sit down and talk about the mistakes that were made so we could learn from them. Let but me even ask when you, you talk about mistakes. So was, you're, you're, you're attacked and crucified for saying we got it wrong on stuff. In yeah. America, we got it wrong on stuff. Well, here we, we are. We weren't honest with people. We didn't say, we listen, if you're, if you're obese, if you're obese, you're in trouble. I if you're older, point. you're in trouble. I'd much if you're young and shape, you got a better shot. We, didn't, we did not splice that. We treated everything the same. Let me ask you this, Taurus. like, well, I'm immune to it, or let, this, we attack. Let me ask you this, Taurus. In, the U in England, actually, the NHS, the health service here, has just ruled to ban children from being given puberty blockers. This follows a lengthy campaign here. It's been a raging issue in America. What do you think? Oh, I think it's great. It's butchering. It's, there's no reason for it uh, at all. You know, to, to be changed for sexual matters as a child is ridiculous. Like, we don't, in America, you can't buy a pack of cigarettes. You can convince children that Santa Claus is real, that a tooth fairy takes their tooth from under a pillow. So grooming them or talking to them about where they are, there's a whole reason why you call growing up. And you go through things and you support and your first move should be therapy, probably family therapy, not looking for drugs and medications and stuff like that. And, and I think it's great. And I hope America follows suit. You have experience in this particular the issue the yourself. Follows. I Did think, you it's, a great, from I think it's a great dysphoria. day for parents. And um, all right, James, and, you want again, to say that's what well, no, That's a good question. I mean, you're speaking like you know, but I don't know if you've actually had this in your family. So I'd like to know whether you have experienced this. Yeah, I actually, we, we have. You've, you've had a child or someone close to you that had gender dysphoria? I have, I have one of my children uh, is in the LGBT uh, That's not spectrum. what I asked, though. Did, do you have experience as yeah. a parent with trans, a trans child? Yeah. Right. And we're not running off to the doctors. Wow. I, I, I'm so, I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. Well, James, you, your view about well, that's this... Well, that's my family, and it's none of your business. Right. And I completely agree with you. You asked him a question, Tara's responded, yeah, right. probably to your surprise. Let me ask no, you... No, not to my surprise. I'm James, pleased to hear that. One of the it's campaigns... always to their surprise. I'm not surprised. I, I'm asking because I want to know that you have experience in what you're talking about, and you've answered the question, and so, therefore, yeah. I, I'm not going to come back at you. I, I just wonder if Tyrus would be applauding when we actually go behind that headline, because what that headline doesn't actually tell us, Tyrus, is that they're not going to stop giving um, the puberty blockers to children. Actually, they will no, continue... If you want it, you can find a way. Actually, they will continue to be prescribed that. And um, we're looking at just under uh, 100 children at the moment who are currently being prescribed it. And they're being mm -hmm. prescribed it, you'll be pleased to hear, and I hope you'll be applauding this, by medically trained physicians experts who understand why it is mm. the children need to be prescribed this particular medication. I don't think... So I, to applaud the fact that right. um, it's been banned, uh, I'm, I am concerned about that because here we are, interestingly, now talking about the medical experts who have opined that children, uh, in certain cases, do need these drugs, and yet you seem to be applauding the fact that they're banned. That concerns me. All right, I feel what is worth, as a father of four kids, I think no child should be given puberty blockers. I think it should be outlawed everywhere. And I think what's been going on yep. at some of these clinics, like the Tavistock Clinic in, in London, absolutely disgraceful child abuse. I just want to then, talk about what... Please, you do realise you're talking about parents... Uh, of these children, don't you? So you, you, you've shown us the parent yeah. card here, but these children who are, who are being prescribed, totally medically prescribed, have parents. I think it's disgraceful. So you're, su you're, you're suggesting that these pa parents, who are no doubt going through a hell of their own... You've no idea what they're going through. You don't well, know what I, they're going I through I suspect either. it oh. hasn't Piers, been easy for them. them. Do, there's honestly, a reason the Tavistock Clinic has been shut... Please don't do this shut, hand thing. And the two further clinics have been opened. And two further clinics have been opened. It was committing child abuse. And two further right. clinics it was not, have been opened. Oh, sorry, was it ruled as, as committing child abuse? You have that factually written by court. shut down. That's not what I asked you. It's my interpretation what was being done to children there, yeah. Tyrus, um, I also just want to apologise for putting you on the spot there because that, that is unfair and I didn't expect that answer. All right, look, the... we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Um, I well, talk that's about... the problem when you try to throw shit up in the wall and somebody hits you no, back. No, I facts, wasn't throwing you know? shit at the wall. It's embarrassing. I just wanted to point yeah. out that this, this um, research that was done in the UK that decided to ban puberty blockers was only... The people that they asked, only 32% of them were actually trans or mm. trans children, and that's not enough to decide what... Like, all these parents that don't have well, these problems, all these other better, people are just uh, deciding for or these trans people, and that's not acceptable, uh, that's not situations. fair. Yeah, look, let's... let's... Right. Well, well during, this, during this time of... Uh, I will say this. During this time, um, my child that you're asking about has had several different directions that they have gone to, in and out of. And so if I would have jumped at the first one, 
and ran her off to the doctors, and then what? So as she's growing, as therapies and all that good stuff. We'll sending love. To, we'll see uh, where she's at and, and what she know, wants to do. She goes. Because I'm, yeah. whatever she wants, at the end of the day, when she's old enough to make that decision, I'll be right there with her. All right. Or him. For that. Or they. Or all whatever right. my child wants to be. Absolutely. I completely agree. Uh, okay, let's move on to something uh, a little lighter. Catfish girl. Uh, Hannah Barron from Kentucky, who is an outdoors influencer and catfish noodler, has become a social media superstar. Um, the post from Samira Carr has been viewed 62 million times uh, because she said that Hannah's accent needs to be illegal and women should be banned from doing manual labour like this. There's nothing feminine about American women. Well, let's listen to uh, this clip. I've been helping dad build houses since I was 15. I just think that you should embrace your own individuality. You should be yourself. And don't worry about what anybody else said because these folks talking about me and think they're going to offend me, that ship sailed a long time ago. So don't be scared to build your own box and don't try to fit in anybody else's. Taurus, I absolutely love the Kentucky accent, I have to say. Um, I'm pretty outrageous of this Samira I'm a big Carr. fan of the British one. Huh? I said, I'm a big fan of the British accent. <laughs> of course. I know you want, to, you want to speak like me. Let's be honest, Cyrus. You know you do. Um, and I want yeah. to speak uh, like you. Uh, and occasionally, if I ever get pulled over by a cop, I would love to have your accent. Yes, I would. <laughs> um. Um, but on this one, uh, the, the kind of the snobbery of this woman, Samira Carr, uh, saying that her accent, Hannah's uh, accent you know needs to be I... illegal and women shouldn't be doing manual labour like catfish noodling. Right. Listen... Uh, and, and she good for her to speak her mind. We want people to speak her mind, but that's just not how it is. Unfortunately, uh, if you would have done life differently, if you maybe applied yourself more in school or, or worked a little harder or got yourself in a better situation, maybe you wouldn't have to do manual labor, uh, whatever your circumstances is. But the world, there is no perfect box and there's no promises. Everything comes from hard work and we all get circumstances and things that happen to us in life. But to say, I don't think it's fair, it's not fair, it wasn't for me, uh, it just shows that we have a real problem with accountability right now in this country where nothing's their fault and they're not responsible for any of their actions and anything they have to do is forced against their will. Uh, and that's just the beauty of living in a first world country where you can complain about getting good wages and being able to have a roof over your head and electricity and the Wi-Fi and you can sit on your, take pictures of your food and send it to your friends all day and then complain about it all. I mean, that's a really nice luxury to have here in America and the western parts of this country. So yeah. that's, it's uh, more, as you listen to them whine and complain, but at the, at the end of the day, why are we even talking? Good for you, lady. She, her, yeah. her smugness did not dictate what her life looked like. Yeah, and Paula, I mean, this idea that you can't be feminine and noodle a catfish. Have you ever noodled a catfish? You sure can. <laughs> Piers, you know I swim in the River Thames and I absolutely Do you? love it. Yeah. While swimming? Yeah. So have you noodled a catfish? I haven't noodled a catfish. Would you but like to? I will, I, absolutely, and mm. I'll look out for one the next time I do. But <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to say that, unfortunately, it doesn't surprise me that mm. there are women like Miss Khan around who think that it is appropriate to tell another woman what she should look like, mm. what she should sound like. Uh, sadly, you get that even in terms of your race. You will have people of colour telling you that you have not suffered from racism. Um, it, I it's think not... she's brilliant. I've got to say, I she's loved amazing. her accent. And I love what she does. She's fantastic. I couldn't noodle a catfish. It looks incredibly hard work, but it's, I think it's fantastic. James, you must have noodled a few catfish. Oh, time. I've, um, yes, I have. <laughs> or been um, catfished by a few noodles. I've been catfished by a few noodles. Um, <laughs> I, I love her, and I think Paul is right. I think this, this is the issue when you start policing gender, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. and, and it's great that you agree on that. I, I do. don't think we should yeah. be walking around accusing people of being too masculine what, or what too is feminine, feminine. Because yeah. it's all just made up anyway. It is. I totally agree. Have we reached oh. a point of consensus? Sorry, Did what? You, what? Did you just say it's ma you just said gender's made, made up? up? Who would have thought Did we'd we be united out? by oh my God. noodles? Uh, before we let you go, Taurus, what have you got coming up on your Outkick show? Oh, I got a cool interview with Hot Tip Jesus. So uh, it's going to be fun and kind of comes out this Sunday. Brilliant. So uh, we, we got after it. 
Brilliant. You know, uh, and you were a great guest. Uh, it was an amazing opportunity to, to sit down with you one on one. Uh, I really appreciate you doing that for me. Well, you were That's a worryingly a good interviewer. You're, you're heading into my turf, Tyrus. I think you two should get a room, actually, guys. <laughs> Why don't you love Paula and I as much as Tyrus? Be a hell of a note. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrus, great to see you, mate. Thank you very much indeed again for joining us. Uh, Paula, James, thank you both very much yep. indeed. And that's it from us.